And actually, a lot of stuff that's been coming up with these podcasts are people going through like mental health or dealing with stuff because they're not learning fast enough or they didn't get a job right out of school or stuff like that. So I was wondering, how do you feel about mental health in the industry and how people should cope with it, I would say? Yeah, I mean, mental health anywhere. It's tough times at the moment, really tough times Mm -hmm. Um, with with people being in lockdown, people seeing riots on the street, people just... There's so much for people to worry about. I think mental health, just everywhere, not just in the games industry. Um, I, I worry about it a lot. And part of, I mean, this, uh, I'm tempted not to have this conversation with you because it could, it could go astray, but I will because I trust you and I know you'll do the right thing with it. Okay, I know our, anyone listening at the moment, you know, the, the five people that are still with us after me rambling as I've done thus far. I think um, they all left actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, okay, just you and me then. You and me. Thanks. Life to the heart. Um, I only have myself to blame. So the video games, like anything in life, if used correctly, are amazing. And I've played video games my entire life. I've used video games as a meditation, stress relief, connecting with other people, challenge myself activity. Works very well. In, throughout my video game playing journey, there's been many, many, many times where I've overindulged to the point where it's been damaging to me and my life. You know, MMOs, I now, I can't go near them. They're just like, it, it's not something that you just play for 20 minutes and say that was fun. It's like 12 hours later, it's like, oh, I've leveled up four levels. That was amazing. Oh my God, where did my life just go? So I think... There's a real conversation that the video game development industry doesn't have about the product that they make. The product that we make, that we create, is a product that can very easily have people not go out and fulfill their dreams in life. And part of the thing that gets a little bit messy is as video game developers or people who are learning how to code or people who are learning engines, you're like, but I'm doing it. I'm taking action. I'm building a thing. I'm now a creator, not just a consumer. And I'm liking creating. But the thing is what we're creating is a product that other people can consume. It's a little bit like saying, um, I don't want to eat a whole bunch of pastries and cakes because that's, if I eat too many of them, it's not good for my body, but I'm going to become a pastry chef. And then being a pastry chef, the better you are as being a pastry chef, the more pastries people are going to eat, which you eat one pastry a week, not a problem. You eat, two pastries a day, big problem. So that's something that I think as the video game development industry, we we need to be very conscious about that there are a lot of people out there who can't handle it, that can't, that don't have alternatives in life. And let me go one step deeper on this. This, The psychology of this is if you or I are sitting at home thinking, ah, my life is kind of dull, don't have much going on, I'm not winning on a daily basis, you know, maybe you don't have a, a life partner. Maybe you don't have a job that you're interested in. Um, you know, maybe you look around your surroundings and there are whatever. On top of that, you look around your surroundings, there's a lot of coronavirus stuff going on. And it's a real challenge. You jump into the video game. You're like, I have a goal. Okay, I need to get from A to B. I need to destroy this many things. I need to collect that many things. Great. Oh, finally, I've got something to focus my time and energy into this goal. Great. And then you achieve the goal and you're like, I did it. I won. I feel so good about that. And this is why you and I and the people listening love video games. That is a spectacularly useful tool. The concern that I have is for people who, if video games weren't there for them, would push a bit harder and find something else in their life that could grow and become a thing. For example, maybe I'll learn guitar. Uh, maybe I'll start gardening. Maybe I'll exercise some more. Maybe I will go down to my, you know, maybe I'll find a meetup group and do a thing. And I'm not saying, just to be clear out here, I don't want this to be snippeted and put around the internet and like, this guy's a jerk. Is I'm not saying one is better than the other. Both are great. But I think a lot of the mental health is, comes from people who get all of their positive reinforcement and winning in life from video games And if that wasn't there or if they did less of it, then they would get that from other areas. And those other areas can lead to tangible skills that you can then apply in other areas of your life. You learn to play the guitar, you can go and play in a band or play with your friends or down at the beach. You know, you 
in a lady that you're interested in, but you, it's very difficult to serenade the lady with <laughs> like, with a PlayStation controller. They're not as into that as as I would like, you know, from hey, you're my, my younger more days. Like, look at me, <laughs> look how cool I am at Call of Duty. It's like really. Um, and so, and it's also it's yeah. also job related skills. It's trade related skills. It's it's physical related skills. So I know the video game industry has tried. You know, the Wii is now very active. You know, when the Wii came, it's active. But that's not really an alternative to going and learning judo no. or taekwondo or karate. It's not really something that has you walk down the street feeling like you know confident in your body and your skills. So mental health, I'd say anyone listening to this that struggled a little bit with mental health, and, and I certainly have myself, you know, not as, not as extreme as a lot of people out there who are doing it really tough. But, you know, if, if you've been bored, if you procrastinate, if you've been a little bit down in the dumps, if you've been unsure of yourself, that's all mental health, is moderate your consumption, as in do less consumption and do more creation. That's, that, I think, is the secret. You don't have to get rid of consumption. And when I say consumption, I mean playing games, watching videos, um, you know, watching TV shows, et cetera, all that kind of stuff. It's all, it's all very similar for me. That's, that's leisure. It's consumption. Do it. Do it an hour a day, not five hours a day. Do it, you know, do it in moderation. And then the rest of the time, go out and create, build skills, build life skills, connect with people, face-to-face -face conversations as much as you can. And I think that's the secret to mental health. And for you and I, KB, if we're making games, that's our creation. We've kind of solved it. We're like, we, but we're, we're learning new skills. We're learning programming. Um, we're helping other people learn that we're in a community. We've kind of solved it a little bit, but there's a lot of people who are players, not developers who haven't yet solved that. Mm -hmm. So, sorry, man, I know that's a long rant, but it's something I, know, I feel it was a good really one. passionate about. Because no. people, people aren't talking about it. It's a little bit of a, a secret, I think that if you play video games six hours a day, your life is not going to be as good as if you only play video games one hour a day. And that's a really controversial statement in our industry. Mm -hmm. And I'm one of the crew. I've played games my whole life. I've made games my whole life. I teach people how to make games. So I'm, I'm, I'm in the, I'm right in there with everyone, but you know, one hour healthy, six hours, not healthy is, is my feeling on this right at the moment for the state of the world and mental health. Mm -hmm.